Hey everyone, welcome back to another week of the show. Um, we're down to the last three episodes. So uh, these last couple episodes are going to be about like my top three uh, movies, essentially. Uh, all the movies I've talked about so far have been my favorites, but these last three episodes are going to be the ones that, generally speaking, when people ask me, okay, Gerald, what's your favorite movie? I'm probably going to mention one of these three, um, or all three of them, and then give you a little re reason why. So um, these might, these last couple episodes might be a little longer, just because I'm going to maybe talk about them a little longer than uh, some of the other ones. But these are the movies that I just love the most and have like had the biggest like impact on me, um, just as a filmmaker and as a person, and uh, just. The movies that I these are the kind of movies that I want to make uh, I think uh, as well the movies I want to make that the movies that I love to talk about that the movies that I enjoy watching over and over again no matter how many times I've seen them um, and they have all the different things that I like about uh, movies they all have great cinematography and great use of special effects and soundtrack and performances and you know they're just all three of these are all around great movies um, that just stick out to my mind, you know, all the time, and they're movies that I've watched a bunch of times, they're movies that I own, and uh, just love to talk about. So, um, for this, uh, uh, this week, this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, Inception. Um, it actually came out 10 years ago, uh, this year, um, and it is Christopher Nolan's uh, film. It's a Christopher Nolan film. It is, I forget which number it is. I've seen just about all of them except Tenet, which is set to come out uh, later this year. Uh, we're still hoping that uh, it still comes out with everything going on. But uh, Inception is um, one of his more known films. Uh, it's one of his most known films aside from the uh, Dark Knight movies that he did, um, which are all great. Uh, my personal favorite Christopher Nolan movies are the ones that aren't the Batman ones. Not that the Batman ones are, the Dark Knight trilogy, are bad movies by any means. They're actually very fantastic movies, very good comic book movies. Um, they're not my absolute favorite rendition of Batman, but it a, tells a very complete story. Um, and there are many reasons why I like those uh, movies. But his non-Batman uh, movies, I think, are far better uh, from a story standpoint and uh, just overall as movies. And um, I like Christopher Nolan's work because his work is very original feeling, at least. Um, not every single one is super, super original. Um, this is one of the most original movies that he did, I think. Uh, but at least all of his movies feel like something different even if the base storyline is the same. He always does something with the story and the plot that makes it feel like it's something completely different. Uh, this one is a great example of that um, because it takes... the movie's about dreams and uh, I don't... this is not a movie that I want to get super into the plot about because the genius of the plot is the, move, is the part of the movie that I love the most and it's the one I don't want to talk about too much because it's one that I believe if you haven't seen it you need to see it without a whole lot of detail on of the plot so that you can just enjoy it for what it is but uh, essentially it's about dreams and ideas and the main theme and the main plot of the movie is just about a father trying to get his way back home to his children. That's essentially what the film is about with the combination of dreams and ideas and how all that makes, mixes together. Um, that sounds weird but that's what it's about. Um, it's also a heist movie uh, which if you haven't seen it or you know you don't know what I'm talking about you're kinda like how does dreams and ideas and a heist all match up to you know, a father just trying to get back home to his kids. Well, you know, that's, that's Inception, you know. Um, that's just the gist of it, uh, as best as I can give. Um, but just the way all those things are taken together and constructed 
in this story is is just genius um, in my honest opinion from a writing standpoint it's uh, it's one of those you're gonna watch it at least twice you're gonna watch it you're not totally sure if you got everything you're gonna watch it the second time and if you really think about it you can get to the point of the movie the second time watching it but it's one of those where it's so well done that every time you watch it you're gonna pick up on something new um, that you didn't necessarily pick up on before so uh, I think that's also the mark of a good movie is that its rewatch value is high and that every time you can you throw the movie in and you watch it you pick up on more things that you didn't see the first time you watched it um, so uh, that's 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 inception from a story standpoint that makes it so great um, and is the big reason why it's such an excellent film um, it's also got a lot of cool special effects it's a sci-fi movie um, and the special effects you know we live in an era where like special effects and CGI and that kind of stuff is used a lot in movies and though it's gotten more sophisticated I feel like we've gotten used to seeing that so much now um, and some movies do it better than others and even though we're used to seeing it you know we can tell when something's fake or not uh, it can still be really well done uh, this is an example of them taking special effects and using them in a way that it feels super real and you're not totally sure how they pulled off some of the shots and sequences in this film which is what's really really cool um, they do a lot of things practically um, there's still quite a bit of you know computer generated effects that are, that are in it um, but they also do a lot of practical effects in you know models and all these kind of things to tell the story and uh, the way it's done is just super impressive and it's really well you know uh, you know really well executed everything feels super real and tangible and you know the whole time you're watching it you're just like your mind's blown not just by the story but by the visuals that you're seeing uh, with the story so like uh, yeah props to the, the the special effects team and the you know uh, everyone who worked on that, the cinematography, the way it tells the story with the editing. Uh, works very well with the editing, I mean, and um, uh, it's just a brilliantly crafted film. Uh, definitely one of the best that have come out in the past 10 years. Uh, definitely one of the best that have, you know, ever been made in my honest opinion, which is why it's one of my favorites. Um, I think it, it was sort of like The Matrix, where it's was groundbreaking in a very unexpected way. Um, there are things that The Matrix did for the sci-fi genre that made it feel totally unexpected and different. Uh, you know, coming out of the Star Wars era of things and then this took it a step further, um, which is really, really cool with a much better story, uh, I think. Um, and uh, the performances are also really well done. Uh, that's something that is sort of lost in the spe spectacle of the film and the story and the uh, special effects and everything about it. Uh, the performances are actually really, really good. Um, and I think that's because the performances are so good that they don't, they're very realistic and sort of, you know, subtle that they don't really take you out of the movie too much. There's nothing that is like super like, you know, like that I guess stands out about the performances which some people would argue okay well that's not an example of a really great memorable performance but for me it's memorable because the performances weren't something that was trying to like you know there are a lot of movies out there where like the performances are good and that's why people like it and everything else about the movie is kind of eh but this one that I think matches the level of the film it's just that there's so much going on in the, you know, the story itself and the, you know, uh, the cinematography and special effects and everything that's going on, you know, you get throw you don't necessarily pay attention to uh, the performances as much as you would in another film done a different way. Uh, but the performances are still really strong, I think, and all the characters are really interesting. They all serve a very important purpose to the story and the plot which is also what makes it so good um, the 
each of the characters have a uh, very specific task that they have to complete, you know, in the story, and they all connect and relate to each other. Um, and each of the actors does a very good job within the within that role that they're playing. Um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is in it, and I really like his performance and character. He plays the main character. Um, he's just one of those guys. He's good in just about everything he's in. Um, this is one that I definitely thought could have got an Oscar nod, um, but he's also had a lot of Oscar nominations over the course of his career. So, you know, it's kind of hard to say where does it actually fall. But I definitely enjoyed the character that he played. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays like the number two guy in the movie and he does a really good job with that particular role um, and there's uh, Ellen Page, Ken Watanabe, uh, Tom Hardy is in it, Michael Caine is in it um, and a couple other faces here and there. Um, what's his name? He's in uh, the guy from Peaky Blinders. Uh, Cillian Murphy, he, he's also in the movie and he's, he plays a very cool character as well uh, who's very important to the story. Um, and not a super cool character, I guess. Uh, he's actually not a cool character in that he's stylized or anything like that. But he's still a very interesting character and very key to the story. So uh, at any rate, you know, I'm going on and on, and I don't want to, I don't want to make this like a half-hour thing, even though I can talk about this all day. But um, that's all, all the stuff of why I like Inception so much. Um, and a lot more. Uh, you know, one day maybe I'll do a breakdown of some of the spoilers and things about why, you know, Inception is such a, you know, significant movie for me. But that's the gist of it. Um, I love it. Uh, you know, I watch it, you know, maybe once or twice a year. Um, I just watched it recently. I like to watch it with people that haven't seen it before. Um, and just like to watch the reactions as, you know, things unfold. Uh, but it's a, it's a fantastic movie. Um, I can't recommend it enough. So uh, if you loved Inception, you know, give this video a like, share it with your friends uh, that you want to see Inception or haven't seen it or have seen it, uh, and uh, definitely watch it, you know, on its 10th anniversary if you can. Um, I'll put a link in the description when that is, just in case you want to watch it on the actual day. But it's 2020, it came out in 2010, you know, definitely check it out at some point uh, before the year is over. Um, great. Well, thanks for uh, listening to me go a little longer on this uh, uh, this particular one, but you know I love this movie so much, so I definitely had to spend a little extra time on it. So uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, two more episodes to go. We'll see you next week. Everyone, take care. Have a good one.